Greetings everyone, I am Thomas the Retro Nerd, reviewing the games good or bad, and welcome to the 10 year anniversary! For those who just subscribed, welcome. I'm glad to have you here. For those who have been stuck around since the beginning, what can I say? Ten years? My god. It still feels like yesterday when I was a teenager starting this crap. Ah, uh, yes. Ten years of experiencing my love for video games while trying to be my own comedic self. I couldn't be even more awkward than I was. Luckily, as years pass by, I've gotten better with my writing and editing just improving with every new video release. Even though I had some reviews I wasn't proud of, I'm still working on my improvements. As you know, my motto, I review games of all kinds, like good, bad, classic, and in some cases, the ugly. That being said, it's time to take a look at video games based on my inspiration. He's the angriest gamer you've ever heard. He's the angry Nintendo nerd. He's the angry Atari Sega nerd. He's the angry video game nerd. He's gonna take you back to the past to play the shitty games that suck ass. He'd rather have a buffalo. I first discovered the Angry Video Game Nerd back in 2009, and I instantly became a fan. Even though the nerd keeps telling us to stay away from these games he covered, it couldn't stop our curiosity to check them out. There is a difference between seeing shit and playing shit, so I got curious about these turds. Now, just to let you know this one thing, just because I'm a fan of something doesn't mean I can't poke fun of it. I do have to say that the nerd has issues, especially when it comes to his reviews. I've already exposed his misuse of the Game Genie for the Game Boy. You shoved the cartridge backwards! In Ghostbusters, he's been going around in circles trying to get equipment to enter the Zool building. DUDE! Maximize the 25 grand and THEN get your shit to enter the building! Even I knew that. In Lesser the Unlikely, this is not a review. I knew he fell off that rock on purpose. It's like he's not putting any effort into reviewing this game. Believe me, I'll get to this one someday. Lastly, we have E.T. on Atari 2600. Prior to the movie, the nerd REFUSED to review that game. Even though millions of his fans keep spamming him with requests to review it, he STILL wouldn't do it! Every time he sees the game, he screams like a scared cat and weeps like a crybaby! It's like some sort of joke! Watch it! Despite the flaws, I still watch the nerd to see what other crazy stuff he comes up with. Even though that he started the angry game reviews, Everyone has to remember it was Urinating Tree that perfected it. Well, take a look at this. Ooh. That thing didn't even touch me! <laughs> so, reviewing the AVGN video games is a different approach here. First off, no, I'm not going to look at the AVGN games on a computer, mainly because of Flash shutting down and making them impossible to play. I'm also not going to be looking at fan-made games like AVGN vs. Dr. Wily, which is a hack of Mega Man 2. Yes, I have this. I'm talking about the official games brought to us by Sam Bettos of Freak Zone Games, who was also a fan of the show and wanted to make a game based on it. The Angry Video Game Nerd Adventures was released to Steam in 2013. Two years later, it got released on the Wii U and 3DS, and that's how I played the game back then. For this review, I'll focus on the remastered version of AVGN 1 and 2 Deluxe, though I would love to make a comparison between the two versions. Game number one, The Angry Video Game Nerd Adventures. Okay, you can consider this as a re-review if you want. So the game begins with the nerd and his friends playing, what else? A shitty game. Then suddenly, a force sucked the nerd's friends into the TV. The nerd didn't escape long enough since he got pulled in by the nads. Now he's forced into a shitty game. 
you get a tutorial level with Nagi, who obviously patronizes you. In the new version, you can shoot it and get it out of your way. Can't do that in the original version. AVGN is a retro-inspired running gun platformer where the nerd travels across eight different levels. There's a level based on Castlevania, Asshole Venue, where the nerd goes through a castle with zombies, knights throwing axes, and even a boss battle with Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde at the end of the stage. Ugh. A level based on Street Fighter 2010 titles Future Fuckballs 2010. God damn it! Fuck load of shit! Where the nerd has to deal with ladies that'll kill you instantly if you touch them, with robots that look like Rob. Do not even think about it. There is also a Silver Surfer inspired section near the end of the level with the lady from Cyber Wharf on the entire Jaguar as the boss of the level. For the most part, she isn't a hard boss, but it really sucks how during the boss you're only stuck facing in one direction and you can't turn the other way to shoot her. There is a level that is kind of like a drug trip in Happy Fun Candy Time where the level is just kind of filled with really happy suns all throughout the stage. There are blocks of suns with faces on them and spikes all over the place. In the original version of this level, the boss was a generic unicorn, but in 1 and 2 Deluxe, you actually fight the Bearstained Bears as the boss of the level aptly renamed the Bloodstained Bears. Yeesh. <laughs> Thy farts consumed is literally hell. There are fire, lava, and creatures that bear a striking resemblance to cockeye demons from the Doom series, but instead, they are monsters made of feces that shoot shit out of their mouths. Yeah. At the end of the level, you faced off against Satan himself. Oh, that's an interesting fight. Blizzard of Balls is a somewhat standard Christmas-themed level in this game with ice physics, reindeers shooting out shit, and birds shitting all over the place. And fire that for some reason doesn't melt ice. Yeah, yeah even the nerd in this game asked a question. You can even ride the corpse of Santa Claus on this level. Awesome. The boss of this level are the three ghosts from the Christmas Carol episode. Boo Haunted House is a Halloween-themed level that references both Nightmare on Elm Street as well as Friday the 13th. For the most part, this level isn't that bad aside from the fact that you can't see what's in front of you. At first, when the level starts out, you can gradually take your time with finding out where the death blocks are. But when the level decides this place needs falling platforms when you need to jump across at the same time to avoid the death blocks, it gets very hectic. The boss of this level is Jason Voorhees as well as the Claw Freddy Krueger. They aren't that bad aside from the fact that if Jason touches you, he instantly kills you. Dungeons and Dickholes is a fantasy theme inspired level where the nerd has to locate keys to use them to unlock locked parts of the level that you need to progress. Similar to Future Fuckballs 2010, there is an Unreal shooting segment that puts the nerd in the gameplay of a classic shooter, this time fighting the giant claw. He's not hard to take down and goes down pretty quickly, all things considered. And finally, there is a level based on the Atari Porn Games episode entitled Beat Em and Eat Em, where the dancer's all over the place, the nerd shoots tits, and even you bounce on a pair of tits to progress to the level. At the end of the level, you fight General Custer, where he wants his revenge all right. Custer jumps around all the time, and I don't even want to imagine what he's shooting at you. But overall, if you avoid and continue to shoot, he isn't that bad to take down, and is probably one of the easier bosses in the game. In terms of gameplay, like I mentioned, this is a game designed to harken back to the days of old-school side-scrollers that weren't the longest games, but were so hard that the length was based more on difficulty rather than the size of the game itself. The nerd is pretty standard in terms of controls, and you can shoot in eight directions. But there are also a few different power-ups that the players can use to help them make the game a little bit easier. The stones don't really do much, but the Super Mecha Death Price power-up is essentially a screen nuke Really useful when there are a ton of enemies in front of you. And there's also the game graphic glitch gremlin, which freezes the game for a few seconds, allowing the nerd to navigate through parts of the level way easier. There's also the super scope that the nerd can find, which makes the attacks go up, but you will lose it in one hit. Shh. Along with the nerd, you could also find three friends that got sucked into the game as well. The guitar guy can shoot a wavy projectile that can pass through walls. He is fast, though he has a short jump. His speed is very useful during some of those death block sections. Motherfucker Mike has the shortest attack, but he can locate secrets in this level and has the highest jump. Though in the end, he seems rather useless for the majority of the adventure. My apologies, Motherfucker Mike. That leaves a bullshit man from you. Yeah, it's bullshit. Pardon the pun. He is slow as shit, but he also has a double jump and a really useful bullshit attack. Quite frankly, the most powerful attack in the game. Across the eight levels, the game has to offer. The challenge isn't too hard. But sometimes the level design can be really cheap when some of the obstacles in the game wants you to deal with. Death blocks instantly kill the nerd, and they're plentiful throughout the game along with spikes, bottomless pits, and enemies that want the nerd dead. 
Eventually, as we beat all eight levels, we unlock the final level in Game Land, Laughing Jokey Numbnots. Obviously a reference to LJN. And if you thought any of the levels before were unforgiving, wait until you play the final level in AVGN Adventures. This level is super unforgivable. Rainbow lasers are instant death. Swirling LJN logos. Nearly everything in this level wants the nerd dead. Easily, this is one of the hardest levels in any retro platformer that I ever played. At the end of the level is the person behind it all, Fred Fox. In the original game, Fred Fox is based on Sam. In the deluxe version, he's based on... <sighs> the late Gilbert Gottfried. <laughs> hey, you alright? Oh, Gilbert, why did you have to go? Why, Gilbert? Why? Uh, Godfrey. Tragic. Yeah, Gilbert Godfrey played Fred Fox in the Life of Black Tiger video. Hilarious. Now I can't read the dialogue to this game without doing Godfrey's voice. I'm going to shove your head so far up your asshole that you'll be able to see the back of your teeth. As the final boss, Fred Fox is tricky, especially with his balls flying around, but if you can learn his pattern, he isn't that hard to take down. Eventually, the nerd takes down Fred Fox, and the nerd and his friends decide to play another shitty game, which is what they do best. Overall, AVGN Adventures is a fine game, but the difficulty holds the game back from being really good. The game itself, especially the final level, is intentionally made hard, and for that reason, it can be a very hard game to recommend to anyone who isn't an AVGN fan. The graphics and music, along with the controls, are absolutely great. The one thing I have to really criticize is the lack of more levels in the game based on episodes of the show. I mean, when you take a second to think about it, only four levels in the game are very heavily inspired by certain games that the nerd has reviewed. Each of the bosses at the end of every level are characters that reference specific moments from AVG and history, but not some of the levels. I mean, Blizzard of Balls is a standard Christmas level, but doesn't really take advantage of the source material. Same with Thy Farts Consume, you fight the AVGN incarnation of Satan at the end of the level. That's it. And you ride a shark that shoots lasers, which is really sweet. But I just felt like it could have just taken just a little bit of a bigger inspiration from the nerd for just a few levels. But we still have one more game to discuss, and now let's move on to game number two, AVGN 2, Assimilation. Just a correction, it's not assimilation, it's assimilation. Emphasis on ass! EVGN2 starts out with everyone in the world sipping beer and just having a good time when suddenly a laser comes and turns the whole world into a shitty game! All except for the foul-mouthed nerd who survives in his game room. Eventually, the nerd wakes up and soon begins his adventure running into Fred Fox, who was the nostalgia critic in the original release of the game. Fred Fox wants all the pieces of the Fox capacitor. Why? Well, we'll discuss that at the end. The game sees the nerd travel across five different and colorful worlds with themes taken from different parts of Cinemassacre, probably even more than the first game. There's a world based on board games, a world based on Monster Madness, a world based on the sewers from the Ninja Turtles, a world based on Area 51 from the ABGN movie. Actually, scratch it, all the references from the movie have been removed in the deluxe version. Maybe Sam lost the rights to it? I don't know, let's move on. And finally, there was a world based on Ninja Gaiden and Hong Kong 97. Each of the worlds has a total of three levels with a mini boss thrown in the worlds, usually based on a character from Cinemassacre history. That wasn't me, that wasn't me, that was the fucking phone! As well as a boss at the end of each world which has its own level. The gameplay itself is mostly identical to the first game, but it's still an old school platformer that's hard as balls, but not hard enough to make you punch a hole through your TV and toss your controller out the window. However, unlike the first game, there are a number of improvements made to make it feel way more like an actual game that anyone can pick up and play to have a fun time with. First off, the level design has seen a tremendous overhaul since the first game, and it's just overall way fairer. There are still death blocks and spikes, but they aren't as plentiful as before, and instead, they're spread way more thoroughly throughout the level. Secondly, the nerd can receive upgrades to make the adventure way easier. There are the shoes that let the nerd to wall dash, similar to how it works in the Mega Man X games. There's the power pad that allows the nerd to glide in the air. There's a laser scope which the nerd can use to help locate secrets throughout the stages, like hidden blocks to walk across and hidden items in beer. The NAS Max can be used to allow you to charge up your zapper to have a more powerful shot. 
The Power Glove allows you to punch through blocks, making some levels easier, as well as discover secrets in certain levels. And finally, the Super Scope allows you to have a way stronger attack as default, rather than the Zapper that the Nerd carries. Don't feel scared if you couldn't find the upgrades the first time. There will be a purple question mark on the world map, indicating which of these levels you can find these upgrades on. Another big notable improvement would be the new power-ups that make the adventure much easier. Bear cakes as they allow the nerd to replenish his health completely with the press of a button. This is probably my new favorite power-up, and I find it very useful in this game, especially through those levels and boss encounters that you have trouble with. There's also a spread shot, which is very useful, but like the super scope in the first game, you lose it if you get hit once. Yet collecting another one upgrades your spread. F-bombs are exactly as they sound. A power-up which is a bomb that has a throwing arc with an F on it. Eventually, if you beat all five worlds, naturally you'll unlock the final two stages of the game. One is very much based on the Virtual Boy with red and black filters that is the hardest level of the game. Ugh. Ugh. I never drank Rolling Rock before, but after playing this game... I gotta admit, it's a good quality beer. Though I'm more of a Coors Light guy and Pepsi. And finally, a stage dedicated to the final boss, who in the original game was Death Mothix. Death what? Death Mothix. Is now replaced by the Fuckertron 3000. Fred Fox originally wanted to use the Fox capacitor because the Fuckertron 3000 was a machine built by him that goes berserk. But after Fred Fox blows himself up trying to take credit for destroying it, it does nothing to the computer in the meantime. The nerd quickly dispatches the Fuckertron, restoring the world to normal, and decides to walk away into the sunset. AVGN2 itself is a massive improvement over the first game in nearly every way. While it may not contain different playable characters, it still is a fun retro-inspired 2D platformer that is hard, but not too hard up to the point where it's too unfair like specific instances in the first game. The game in terms of difficulty is just right. It's not too easy, but at the same time, it's not too hard to make me want to break my controller. The music and graphics are great just like the first game, but in terms of gameplay, it's just a much more smooth game to go through when playing these two games back to back. If there's one game you should play of these two, it's easily AVGN2 Assimilation. And how about we talk about AVGN1 and 2 as a collection for a quick moment. I know I stated that AVGN Adventures wasn't as good, but easily the best way to play both of these games is AVGN 1 and 2 Deluxe, which is the collection of most modern platforms. Back in 2020, ScreenWave released a collection of these two games in one nice budget package for most modern platforms with the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One versions coming later. This collection improves on the graphics, has a way quicker response time, making gameplay flow better when you play through the game. More difficulty options, and improved level design compared to the original PC releases of the game. You can even unlock skins based on Board James and the Big Rigs guy, yeah, Rex Viper, yeah! And also in the first game, there are now collectible NES cards that are originally in AVGN 2. There are also some hidden shit pickles in each level as well. So, compared to the PC version, this is the version I would recommend if you want to play these two games. Rocco, where were you in this entire episode? Speaking of which, I don't think I left anything out in this review. The review is over. Yeah, I doubt it. Thomas, there's a third unlockable game in the EVGN 1 and 2 Deluxe Collection once you beat both games. It's called Tower of Terror. Oh, yeah, you're right. Let's talk about that real quick. The Tower of Torment picks up right where the second game ends. As the nerd is heading home, a certain voice calls out to him from a castle, the nerd telling him his game sucks. The nerd wasting no time sets off to a UFO, which just happens to be there for some reason. Heading off to the castle, the nerd decides that it's hunting season. Tower of Torment is a three level game that has a ton of polish and love put in it. All three of these levels are the perfect difficulty and they are really fun to play through to boot. The first level is a traditional platforming level and it's really fun, yet difficult. The second level is one where you need to avoid a big rigs truck throughout the whole stage. And I love it how it references that it goes faster in reverse. <laughs> And the final level works a little bit like Kid Icarus in Mario 3, where you have the mechanic of going on on the other side of the screen by walking off screen. Eventually, at the end of all this, you fight Bugs Bunny. We're like in the Crazy Castle episode! In the second form of the fight, you have to avoid all the projectiles and then shoot them in the asshole. What in the meat canyon? Fuck nuts is this? With all that, the nerd gets blown up and sent straight to hell. What an asshole! 
Yeah, die, motherfucker, die, motherfucker, die, die, motherfucker, die, motherfucker, die. Tower of Torment is a nice addition to AVGM 1 and 2 Deluxe, and it's easily a joy to play through. All three levels are very well made, and I hope that everyone who is an AVGM fan gets to experience it. So that was AVGM 1 and 2 Deluxe, a great package for those hardcore fans of the nerd. Now, this is only part one of my 10 year anniversary celebration, because there is something I wanted to do since I started this series, but I never managed to do it. But I think the best way to do it is to review the big gun. Oh yeah, I'm doing it. Until then, I'm Thomas the Retro Nerd. Thank you all for watching. See you guys in the next review. He's gonna take you back to the past. He plays some shitty games that suck ass. He'd rather have a buffalo. Take a diary or something is he. He'd rather eat the rotten asshole of a rogue. Oh, oh, I banged my toe. Oh, oh man, man, that's gotta hurt. He's close to puke all over his feet. While playing shit that no one can beat, he just can't take it anymore. Although he won't stop till he's past level four.